Hello everyone, this is RaySpace and we are in Realism Overhaul Sandbox mode in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 and I have here a combination of things that if you're new to the channel you will not recognize very much but uh, those who are more familiar with my designs will recognize many of these things but let me explain. So this is the Orion carrier plane, that's that plus the mini star, which is that. They are both recoverable, that's the first stage, that's the second stage. Uh, that stage is based on the boost plane for the Orion 3 space plane from 2001 A Space Odyssey, but made into a real life thing with methane oxygen and uh, reasonable engines for real life. And this is a small version of Venture Star, which is was uh, supposed to be a single stage to orbit system. Uh, and it is being used as a second stage here in order to boost the payload. And then I have here a lunar lander, the Kumo lunar lander, and this normally has drop tanks, but in this case it would be landing directly on the moon, and it has here a boost tank to transfer it to the moon. So this gets halfway to orbit, this completes orbit, comes back down on its own, this boosts this to the moon, is the idea. Now, I have not done this before with this system because previously the Kumo Lunar Lander was too heavy to do this with the Orion Carrier Plane and the Mini Star. Uh, but things have changed. Things have changed because SpaceX has introduced the Raptor 3 engine. And the engines that we have back here, originally I had Raptors on here, but I decided to replace them with slightly higher thrust, less efficient engines called Rex. Uh, and the Rex, Rexes were meant to be somewhere in between BE-4 from Blue Origin and the Raptors from SpaceX. So a little bit easier to manage. Uh, but with Raptor 3, uh, SpaceX introduced a 280 ton thrust engine that weighed 1.6 tons. So that's a very high thrust to weight ratio. I'm not going for all of that. Again, this was supposed to be somewhat less efficient than Raptor. I, I want the 280 tons, but I'm happy to have an engine mass of 2.4 tons. The original configuration for this engine only had 240 tons of thrust on 2.4 tons, or a thrust to weight ratio of 100. So this has a higher thrust to weight ratio, everything else the same, the ISP is the same, I didn't want to mess with that. So those are the numbers for this engine, and what that allows us to do is fill up the body with more fuel. It had some spare volume. In fact, it still has some spare volume based on the available volume in this body. And so we could add more fuel and then we could also add more fuel to the Mini Star. Uh, so we're using more of its volume, actually all of its volume now. And that can potentially give us enough payload capacity to low Earth orbit in order to do this. Now, in order to make sure this happens, I've had to make this very custom tank uh, to fit a very custom fairing because I definitely didn't want a larger fairing than absolutely necessary. The fairings are very heavy and we would be carrying extra loads. So this is a more streamlined fairing. Actually, I can make it shorter, but uh, maybe we'll have a larger boost stage or something like that later on. So the idea is this is a fairing that could better fit the Kumo on here. So I've done some extra part work, even the mount, of course, the fairing base had to be custom. Everything is custom, right? I think I think everything everything you see here, I made that launch platform, that tower, um, the fairings, that oh the landing gear I didn't make. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not into making landing gear. Uh, so the landing gear on the mini star and landing gear on the Orion carrier plane those are just the stock ones tweak scaled. So yeah, I think that's that. Oh, and the solar panels, there's solar panels on this stage here that are not made by me. Oh, and there's some procedural parts tanks. All right, we've got MLI layers. So let's see if this works out for us. Can I get this to the moon? That's the point. This was not capable of getting this payload to the moon before. 
Now, if you're interested in all the grisly details, all the numbers involved in this, I am in the process of making a website for my designs. It'll be raysspace.com. Uh, it's, it's already up there, uh, but there isn't as much content as I'm planning to add. And so, but some of my older designs, including the Orion carrier plane, are there with all the numbers so that you can judge for yourself whether I've done a legit job of uh, trying to make this a realistic system. It, the Orion carrier plane is a little bit tough because it ends up on a suborbital trajectory and faces a lot of g-force coming down. So it's not meant to be crude, uh, even though it has windows. That's, uh, that cockpit is only meant to be if they need to fly it back uh, using jet engines or something like that. It's not meant to be crude at this point. Uh, the, for some reason, we have Kerbals who snuck into the Kumo lander. Uh, but yeah, neither this nor that are actually crude. But uh, yeah, so that aspect of the G-forces we don't have to worry about. But whether the plane itself has enough strength to bear that G-load is a good question. Though we're talking about G-loads that fighter planes would be designed for. So yeah, it's possible. I'm going to have this do its normal launch. And so run Orion C. It's a very particular launch because the Orion carrier plane, we're launching from Tampico. We are launching from here in Mexico, Tampico. And the reason we're launching here is so that the Orion carrier plane can land here in the Bahamas. And this line does not involve crossing land. Sorry, Florida Keys, maybe a little bit of land there. But uh, it, it's mostly clear. So that is the goal as the plane starts up. And off we go. We do have little SpaceX landing pads, just in case. But this is my Tampico scenery with the city in the background. I keep trying to make KSP as good as possible. But what I really need to do is create a modular system. I mean, there's restock for stock parts, and th those make the stock parts look spiffier. But I sort of want to make the stock parts look more like race parts, if you will. Uh, I think having a set of the stock parts look like my kind of parts, <laughs> if, uh, and my kind of Lego blocks, if you will might be worthwhile. I don't know if anybody else would be interested in that though. It's debatable whether the Orion carrier plane should launch upside down like this at all. The shuttle did that to reduce the loading on the wings and such, but whether this needs to do that, I don't know. I would need NASA specialists to tell me about how this should launch or whether it should launch, but it does roll over because the Orion carrier plane, when it decouples, we want the Orion carrier plane to go down away from the mini star and the mini star to go up. In the video on the Max space plane on the strata launch, I talked about how it's not great to have this, the Max space plane riding on the back of the AM-225 because when it decouples, the AN-225 will tend to want to go up. It's got a big wing and a lighter load now. And the Max space plane doesn't have much of a wing, and it has a huge fuel tank to deal with, and so it'll have a tendency to go down. And so it's very hard to separate the two. That's not a problem for this, because we'll be in space. We don't have aerodynamics when these two decouple from each other. So they can just maneuver away. But even so, I did put separatrons on the Orion carrier plane just in case. So, but generally speaking, just an RCS burst should be enough to separate the two. Now, to make use of the new engine thrust that we've got here, uh, I am letting the Orion carrier plane go a little bit faster than it used to. So it does provide a little bit more velocity. It shouldn't hurt too much as far as getting to the Bahamas because we do end up having to glide further anyway. But whether it hurts in terms of its survivability when it slams into the atmosphere, that's a good question. Okay, and the fairing separate right there. Uh-oh, we had an extra separation. Oh gosh, okay. It was an extra staging event. 
Uh, okay, let me let me let me check staging. Uh, this is really about the KOS script having an extra staging event that probably doesn't need to happen. But okay, we we had a little tragedy with Kerbals on board. See that when the Kerbals sneak on board, when the Kerbals sneak on board, things ha like that happen. That's just how it is. Okay, so those are the fairings. What we want is the fairings to be after the ignition, probably. That'll be good enough. Okay, here we go again. And yeah, it was because I had taken off the fairings to show off the payload and then put them on again that they ended up in the wrong stage. Okay, switching the four engines off on the five engines. That's actually necessary for balance, by the way. The four engines that we switch off are the bottom engines. And as this gets lighter, the stuff on top in relation to it is heavier. The center of mass goes further up. So to compensate for the center of mass going further up, we just switch off the bottom engines. Okay, separation again. Ignition. Bearings. Okay, no extra staging this time. And on we go. And let's get the Delta V reading. Well, it's sort of enough for orbit. We'll see how much we have left when we get to orbit. After all, the Mini-Star has to come back down. We need to make sure that the Mini-Star has enough to de-orbit after releasing that. And I didn't line up with the moon, but we'll just sort of... we'll figure that out. Now, how far? How bad is it? Hmm, not great. <laughs> not great. But I think we can deal. 87. Once it releases the payload, we'll see, but I can't really tell right now. Okay, well, here we are, trying to get to the moon with this relative inclination, which is bad. We'll have to take longer than usual. And try to get there at that ascending node. Supply-wise, that they snuck on board. I wasn't thinking of dealing with them, but there should be two weeks for all of them. Let me just check. Oh, but it's Kerbalism. Who knows? Uh, it is two weeks for all of them. So we just have to get there in less than two weeks. I mean, I, I don't intend to do any more with this mission afterwards. We just need to make sure that it can land on the moon. Well, 11 days and that's fine for now. Interesting, the, this tank is oriented upside down right now. Well, let's get the solar panels out. The Kumo itself has a fuel cell. Uh, if we don't need to use it yet, we don't need to use it yet. Well, anyway, we don't want to be with the Mini Star when we do this. Let's see if the Mini Star will eventually be able to get back home. So, off that goes. Ah, we lost the node. But it's got enough for the transfer, at least. So 55 tons to low Earth orbit. And we have 161 meters per second left. Now, I'm not going to actually do the whole re-entry and landing. I'm just going to... Let's just make sure that if we try to go down, we can. It dumps the mount after doing the re-entry burn. And it actually uses its OMS engines, these guys over here, inset, in order to do the re-entry burn. So let me shut these. Those might get less delta V. 157. Well, not too bad. Okay, so let me do that. Well, more now, because residuals are random. I'm going to set the periapsis to zero. You might have to do more like boosting its apoapsis to make sure that it's in a standardish orbit so that I can predict its landing location, so that's a consideration. Okay, so we have 147 left. That should be enough to control re-entry and everything, and normally it would go normal. And then with 
it on a suborbital trajectory, it would release that mount like that. So delta V-wise, we're okay. Okay, that's a nice 130 kilometer periapsis. God knows what inclination, but 130 kilometer periapsis, 11 days, 6 hours. Now, without its drop tanks, the Akuma would only be used like this if we have a surface base to land at that could refuel it. So, that is the idea. It needs to drop tanks only if there's no surface base that can refuel it. As long as there's a surface base that can refuel it, then we can go like this, direct, without using the drop tanks. Now, it's still a little bit tight, because we have to capture into orbit with the Kumo, and then land. And it better not be trying to read the Kumo's fuel. Lock this. Okay, it's not. Alright. Just checking. Okay, selling the fuel down. And ignition. So again, this could be replaced with four engines if we really want to, or three engines, three RL-10s or something. But 463 seconds of ISP, so we're act asking quite a bit from it. Okay, let me just RCS the rest of that. Well, well, uh, maybe we don't want it to be so low, but maybe we can go on this side. That's pretty good. Polar and everything. Alright. Well, let's head over to the moon. Uh-oh. Oh no! This is probably not suited to Kerbalism. Ah! They're all gonna perish. Let's not talk about that. Now, there's no CO2 scrubber on the Kumo for Kerbalism. It's just attack life support thing. Ah, uh, I forgot about that. Well, I'll have to fix that. Let me make a note. <laughs> you guys have turned into a memo. I hope you appreciate that. Um, all right. Well, uh, yeah. Well, we didn't need them anyway. We're just seeing whether the hardware can land. Okay, well, uh, but no more kerbals. But let's proceed. Okay, we're going to jettison that. Let's start the fuel cell here and jettison that. Unlock the fuels. But it has 2,949 meters per second right now. So, should be enough to capture and land. Okay, ignition. This just, these just have stock plumes. Okay, we are in orbit and we, we are in 95 by 77 with 2,076 land. It's less than I'd normally want, but it should be doable. Uh, let's just say because it, I mean, this is probably going to be bumpy, but the smooth side facing the earth, well, the side that has all the seas facing the earth uh, is in the dark, so I don't want to do that. So we'll go for the bumpier side. Well, maybe we should go more for the North Pole over here. Let's try that. This has a lot of thrust. And so you can see it only takes us 3 minutes and 21 seconds to do the 2,000 meters per second. Uh, that is so that there is some redundancy. If it needs to, it can abort with just two engines. They do throttle deeply enough to manage the lunar landing with all four, though. We're assuming reasonably deeply throttling methane oxygen engines here. Right now it's uh, 24 kilonewtons full thrust, it's 120, so they're 30 each. We need 460 seconds of ISP, they're hydrolocks. So we're basically looking at like smaller versions of the old CC, which is the common extensible cryogenic engine. 
that CC was a variant of the RL10. Of course, if it needs to, if, so if it fails, if one engine fails, it would have to make sure to shut off the opposite one, and then the the pair that remain him handle things. Obviously, if one shuts down and the other one does not, then that would be a big problem. Well, I started a little bit early, so we ended up drifting a little bit. Up, 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 up. Oh, keep it going, keep it going. Okay, soft landing. Alright, uh, no, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. It's uh, leg positioning might be uh, something to work on. Maybe instead of just going straight out, they should also turn that way and that way. But anyway, the Kumo... Kumo means spider in Japanese, so you can tell why I called it that. But all right, so Delta V wise, it can work. And now I think I should probably redo this with verifying the recoverability of the carrier plane and the mini star. But for now, we have increased the capacity of the mini star Orion carrier plane system, and we have landed this on the moon. Uh, so I'll take it as a win and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.